G'day everyone, Dicko here with another kick-ass walkthrough. In this second part of a mini-series on rigging in Maya, we're going to talk about constraints. And in particular, what the hell are they, how do they work, and how can they help me rig something? That's what we're going to find out in this video. And of course, if you love what you're seeing here and you've gotten something out of it, feel free to give a like, subscribe, and hit the bell notification for more. So let's jump right in and have a look. All right, so I've got this file set up, a really simple scene to describe how these different constraints work. Because I'm a good 3D artist, I'm going to go ahead and save this file right away. And while I do that, I'm just going to give a brief description about what a constraint does. A constraint allows you to control the transform properties of either the scale, rotation, or translation of an object by another object. And this is super, super useful because it allows you to build complex rig systems whilst at the same time allowing you to control them in simple ways, such as using control curves to control different parts of the body within a rig. Okay, so also notice that I have two separate rows here to work with of the same item because we need to talk about offsets in particularly how they work when you go to constrain something. In Maya, you can either constrain something with offsets or without offsets, and that changes the behavior of how the constraint works. Another thing that I've done very quickly is gone ahead and frozen the transforms on all the objects in that 3D scene. And we'll talk about why in a moment. So freezing or applying an object's transforms basically resets that relative to the object. So now there's no translation values, no scale values, or no uh, rotation values. So that's just what we need for this demo. So the first constraint we're going to pull off is the point constraint. Okay, so to do a point constraint, select the first object, then the second object that you want to constrain to, then go to point constraint. In this case, we're going to turn on maintain offset and then push add. As soon as you do that, you may notice that the second object that you've selected can now be driven by the first object. But this only applies to translation. So X, Y, Z moving at X, Y, Z. It does not apply to rotation. And of course, it does not apply to scale either. However, you can still rotate and scale that original driving object and then move it. And then the other object will follow suit in terms of location. However, if we go ahead again and scale and rotate, it's not going to be affected. Now, if you go ahead and select the constrained object, you'll notice that you can still scale and you can still rotate but you won't be able to directly affect the translation of that object. It will just snap back to its original state once you've moved the constraining object. Okay, so let's go to the second row here and do the same thing. I'm gonna select the second object as well, then go to point constraint, and then I'm gonna turn off, turn off maintain offset and push add. And now you can see it's behaving a little bit differently. Now the second object is copying the translation values from the first object in a much more absolute way. It's literally copying the exact location. It's snapping to the original location of the constraining object. And this is because we've removed the offsets. So when you turn off maintain offsets, it's no longer constraining relative to the original position of itself. Now compared to the object that does have maintain offsets turned on, you will see that the object will still snap back when the constraining object is moved around, but it's going to snap back to its original position, its offset position relative to the constraining object. Now bear in mind again, even in this circumstance, you can still scale and rotate on individual parameters. So each object can still be scaled and rotated individually as objects. It's only when we're going to move the objects around that you start to see the behavior of the constraint take its hold. Now you can tell when an object has been constrained when the values within the channel box have this blue box next to them. That just indicates that there's a constraint. And you can also see the little constraint parameter in the inputs tab um, of what's going on as well. You can see what's being offset, what isn't being offset, etc., etc., etc. Okay, let's move on to the orient constraint. And with the term orient, as you'd expect, it's to do with rotation. Let's turn on maintain offset in the first one again. So for, select the first object and the second object, orient constraint. And again, you can see the constraint taking hold with the little blue box. Now, if we go ahead and try to rotate the original constraining object, you'll see that the second object copies those rotations. 
Now again, this is with maintain offsets turned on. Let's do it with maintain offsets turned off in the second set of objects. So same thing as before, turn off maintain offsets and push apply. Now let's see what the difference is. Okay, so let's go ahead and give that a whirl. And then you may be surprised to see that nothing really looks any different. You can't really tell the difference between maintain offsets and no offsets. Um, what's going on here? Well, the answer has to do with the rotation values themselves. So you can see here that when we first made the constraint, both sets of objects all had rotational values of zero. So no rotation angles or anything like that going on. But if we go ahead and just go ahead and delete the uh, constraints we just added to those objects. So just select the object, open up the outliner and delete the constraint. Do that on both. So just go ahead and delete that constraint and add some rotational properties to those objects. So the constrained objects. So you can see here now we have some rotational values on both of those objects, 45 degrees. And then go ahead and add a new constraint, a new orient constraint, this time with the bottom one again with maintain offsets turned on. Push add. You can see here that the offset is still in the rotations. Now if we do that with maintain offsets turned off in the second set of objects, see what happens. The second object snaps its rotation to match the constraining object. So now rotations are being controlled in an absolute term. So there's no offsets in that second group. Whereas the first set of group of objects, the constraint object keeps its relative rotation, but can still be controlled by the constraint object whilst still maintaining its original orientation. All right, so let's jump into the next one, which is our parent constraint. Again, we're gonna do it with maintain offsets turned on in the first group, and then maintain offsets turned off in the second group. And again, you're gonna see some changes in behavior between both methods. So again, we have two things going on. Firstly, the location has snapped to the straining object in the maintain offsets turned off, whereas in the second one, it's kind of in the same spot as it was originally. Now also note that you can both rotate and translate the constrained object with the parent constraint, but the rotational behavior is a little bit different to the orient constraint. Whereas with the orient constraint, each object is sort of rotating on their individual axes or their original pivot points. But with the parent constraint, the rotation is coming from the constraining objects own individual pivot point. Now also note that with maintain offsets turned off, you will also lose the offsets on both translation and rotation. So it's going to snap and rotate to fit the original constraining objects orientation. The other thing to note is that you cannot get scale with the parent constraint, which is a little bit weird and a little bit confusing because obviously in Maya, when you parent an object to another object, normally you get all attributes being copied, obviously. So, what you will need to do to get the full control of one object to apply to the other object is to create a scale constraint as well. Now, if you've been following the video so far and you kind of understand what's going on, you would probably expect to know what would happen with the scale constraint. It's going to copy the scale from one object to the other. And if you go ahead and do the same thing we've been doing before, one with maintain offsets on, one with the other one off, um, go ahead and give it a go. And again, you'll notice that, at least for now, the behavior between both different versions are going to be apparently the same. So if I go ahead and scale the maintain offset off version, they're kind of behaving in the same fashion. Now this will change once we delete the constraints and we're gonna add some scale offsets in our maintain offsets turned on object. So let's go ahead and add a scale constraint with maintain offsets turned on with an object that does have some scale offsets. And you'll see that now the scale attribute will behave differently. Keeping its original scale attributes whilst also being constrained, just like it has been with rotation and translation. 
So the reason I wanted to talk about this now before we jump into rigging the actual robot is because you need to understand the behavior of how Mayo works with its constraints. Especially if the method in which you're going to be rigging your particular robot is going to rely on it 100%. It's also a good way of showing you how much of, I guess, a puzzle solving process rigging is in Maya. You need to understand what's going on under the hood in this basic term to know when to use the constraint and how to use the constraint to get the behavior you want in your rig. So in the next video, we're gonna figure this out together. We're gonna work out the logic of where constraints go, which ones to use and in what order to use them. And then we're gonna try and test it out with a little bit of animation. So I hope you liked this video. If you enjoyed it or if you found it informative, please give a like, a subscribe, and hit the bell notification at the end. And of course, if you wanna get more from me, feel free to sign up to my Patreon, where you get the working files, ad-free content, other goodies as well. So until the next one, catch us, have fun, and I'll see you soon. Cheers.